I was just like them. I just didn't have the wisdom or the wherewithal to know that there is a better way. And the goal of this podcast is to educate people so they begin to understand that. Are you a busy adult who struggles to find time to prioritize their health? Maybe you want to increase your energy. Maybe you want more confidence. Maybe you want to lose weight. Here at Solid Rock Personal Training, our four to five minute training sessions are simple and fun to help you look good, move well, and feel great so you can live the active lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the Solid Rock Personal Training Podcast. My name is Coach Gabe. I'm joined by Coach Derek. How are you doing today? I am doing great, man. My allergies are acting up on me a little bit, so uh, I sound like I'm a little under the weather. feel great, just my allergies are getting the best of me. Good, good. Well, we got an exciting podcast. Hey, we're talking about what we believe about fitness. Is that right? Yeah, I'm super excited about this topic. There's going to be some good stuff uh, that we get to go over and uh, get to talk to all of our listeners about what Solid Rock believes about fitness. Cool. So, you know, there's there's some lingo in the gym that us coaches use while we're coaching classes or stuff like that. And I've just received some questions about what certain things mean. So we're going to kind of dive through them each real quick. And first question is, what does mind-muscle connection mean? actually mean so that, for, that that's probably one of the most important questions that someone could ask what is mind muscle connection so uh, to break it down it's you know it is what we believe about fitness so most fitness modalities if you listen to last week's podcast talk about more doing things faster going as quick as you can whereas mind muscle connections going slow So, for example, let's use a traditional movement like a bicep curl. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows what that is. If I'm doing a bicep curl, when I begin, I am going to think, hey, I'm using and squeezing and activating my bicep. So as I begin the range of motion, I'm pulling with my muscle through the entire range of motion, and I'm squeezing that muscle at end range. And why is that so important? That is so important because it actually actually allows us to strengthen the muscle. The Mm muscle is going to get leaner. It's going to get more toned, and it's also going to help prevent injury because we're not wearing and tearing our joints out by going fast. We're slowing down, isolating the muscle, and the ligaments and tendons around the joints are going to get really strong. Okay. So, like, it essentially just connects your brain to the muscle group you're using, and you get a lot more bang for your buck out of it. So it's going to keep you safe, and it's going to give you a way more lean and toned physique by getting that mind-muscle connection and really breaking it up that way. Okay, that makes sense. And, you know, currently in the fitness industry, everyone says go faster, but what is the benefit to slowing things down? Like, why why go slow versus going fast? So, like I said, going slow is super important because it's going to be sustainable for you to do in the long run. You're going to be able to stick with a training program. You're not going to feel beat up all the time, and you're going to get a lot better results in the long in the long run. It's going to take longer to get there because you're slowing things down, but you're going to get way better results in the long run. You're going to be able to stick to your fitness program. Okay, that makes sense. You know, another question that we get a lot here, and something we say on the mic all the time, is make sure to take your rest between sets. Make sure you know give yourself your body some time to recover. Why is rest between sets something we encourage here as coaches? Man, all the good questions, man. Whoever set these questions is, they are absolutely awesome. So resting between sets. So what we do is functional strength training. So we're doing mm-hmm. strength work. We're, we're doing strength work the way the human body was designed to move. That's why it's called functional strength work. So if I'm doing push-ups and say I got 12 reps mm-hmm. prescribed for the workout today, um, I can get through 12 sloppy ones and get through it quick and then might not need much rest. But if I'm getting mind-muscle connection, challenging myself, squeezing all the muscles in my body, breathing properly, I might get three reps. I might need to take a break because, oh, my form is breaking down. Rest, catch your breath, let your muscles recover, and then I might need to get back into another three reps. Mm -hmm. What's that going to do? It's going to challenge the muscles a lot more. It's going to help you from injuring yourself and your body is going to get a lot more ripped and a lot more shredded because you're actually challenging and working those muscles through full range rather than having a breakdown um, in somewhere in your kinetic chain uh, Mm -hmm. when you're doing that push-up where you got sagging in your low back and your low back starts to light up on you. Yeah. I mean, the thinking nowadays is the more push-ups I do, the stronger I'm going to get. So what what would you say to the person who thinks... I can either do 50 mediocre push-ups or 10 really solid good form push-ups. What do you say to that person? Well, 
I was that person. Mm -hmm. um, I was a high level um, college wrestler and everything was just get it done at all costs, find a way to win, just go as fast as you can, just however you find a way to get it done, get it done. And that's why I fell in love with this because uh, my body just hurt so bad after mm -hmm. wrestling and I was like, man, something had to change. And so many people that I coach have that mindset that I had. I see them come in, they just rep out 50 so-so push-ups mm -hmm. uh, versus doing the 10 slow ones. And I was just like them. I just didn't have the wisdom or the wherewithal to know that there is a better way. Yeah. Um, and the goal of this podcast is to educate people so they so they begin to understand that. So if I do the 50 so-so push-ups, yeah, I'm going to get through it quick. I might get a muscular burn. But if I did the 10 really good ones and I squeezed my glutes, sucked my belly button in, breathed in through my nose, exhaled all the air so I can contract my muscles more, I'm going to feel way more of a muscle burn. It's going to challenge my muscles more. I'm not going to have as much pain. Um, and it's going to be a lot more enjoyable than thinking i got to ram my head through a wall to get to 50 reps. Yeah. I can do less reps and have more intentionality, getting my mind connected to my muscles, um, and get a way better results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. One thing that happens a lot when I'm coaching people is I'll tell them to engage their muscles, squeeze their glutes, keep it everything tight. And a lot of people say, well, that makes it harder, coach. I don't want to do it that way. What would you, what would you say to that person who doesn't want to go to the more difficult position to give them more bang for their buck? I would, I would challenge that person to you know, revisit their goals and their why. So mm -hmm. what I see a lot of is the mindset. I just want to get through a workout. You know, I just want to come here, show up, get through a workout which is great, I'm glad you're here moving, but if you wanna have an even better quality of life, you wanna even have a better toned uh, physique, then challenging yourself, slowing down, and doing the harder version is gonna get you there faster. It's hard for a reason, it's because you don't have that strength, or you haven't fully developed that skill. It's like anything you new you ever do, um, you're not great at it, and it's challenging, and it can be embarrassing, and be um, a stroke, to, or a shot at your ego. So I would say, hey, be willing to take that shot at your ego. Mm. Be willing to fail and challenge yourself and uh, have a beginner's mindset. Have that white belt mindset so you can continue to progress. Um, and don't be afraid of what everyone else thinks. Just come in here, focus on getting 1% better every day. And a year from now, you're going to be in a great spot versus just getting through something for the sake of getting through it. Yeah, that makes sense. Last little piece to... Uh why we do things differently here. On Wednesdays and Saturdays, coaches are always saying, keep the pace sustainable, keep it sustainable. At other gyms around the area, everyone's saying, go, 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 get it done as fast as you can. But what does sustainable effort mean to us here at Solid Rock? So sustainable effort means um, you should be able to do it at the same intensity for a set duration of time, whatever the duration is of the workout. Our workouts are typically about 45 minutes. We have intervals mixed in there. Sometimes it's a longer piece of work, but uh, say there's three rounds to a workout and say I'm using a rower um, and I got three minutes of work on the rower, I should be able to repeat that effort every time I get back to the rower um, every single round. That means it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Because pacing is where true fitness is found. Um, it's great for your cardiovascular and aerobic health. If I'm just bouncing up and down, going hard, and then I'm going slow, and I'm kind of all over the place, and I have no consistency, um, it's gonna you're gonna have a hard time getting to where you want to go, and you're gonna burn yourself out in your training program. Yeah. Whereas if you have that sustainable effort, it's gonna be more doable in the long run for you, and you're gonna get a lot better results, and your body's not gonna be constantly under stress which is gonna make your body wanna hold on to fat. I see that a lot. A lot of people work out really hard. They do these boot camps or um, maybe some other high intensity interval style of training. Mm -hmm. They're going ham as hard as they can and then they're wondering why they're struggling to lose that 20 to 30 pounds of stubborn fat. It's because their cortisol level, their stress hormone is mm -hmm. through the roof. Yeah, It's already through the roof of their everyday life and then their cortisol levels are getting spiked when they come to train. Like. Their body just doesn't have a break, a time to recover. Yeah. So you're saying that high intensity actually doesn't promote fat loss. It does not promote fat loss. Wow. It will in the beginning because mm -hmm. it's a shock to your system. You'll lose some weight within that, you know, 30 to 90 days, and then you hit a plateau because your cortisol levels are raised, mm -hmm. and therefore you struggle to lose that stubborn fat. Man. So sustainable efforts are the way to go if you really, really, truly want to lose fat. Correct. 
Yeah. People ask me all the time in the gym, like, coach, well, mainly guys say this, they'll come to me, it's like, dude, I just want to look like you, Derek. And that's not to stroke my own ego. Um, in the vast majority of the dudes that ask me that question are the ones that I see just going bananas. They're working hard. They're absolutely cold-blooded killers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're hardworking savages. But we got to shift that mindset to a more long-term approach mm-hmm. because when I changed my training, I didn't crave as much bad food and I wanted to eat healthier more often because I wasn't training as hard. My energy stores weren't as depleted and the nutrition aspect is actually what helps me to stay lean. Mm-hmm. But my training program promotes me eating healthy versus wanting me to eat unhealthy, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's that sustainable effort. That's on Wednesdays and uh, Saturdays. On some of our strength days, we do incorporate some interval training with the bike or the rower. And the term we use is max repeatable effort. What is the difference between max repeatable effort and sustainable? And why do we do both of them? Yeah, so that's a really, really, really good question. So... Um, when you think of your aerobic system, that is sustainable work. So something you can do for a long uh, period of time. We're using oxygen as our energy store. Mm-hmm. So that would be our endurance um, sessions. We do do some intervals, but they're longer pieces where it forces you to be sustainable. Mm-hmm. And then max repeatable effort um, we do on some of our strength days. Um, we're going to do intervals where it's going to be a shorter interval, no longer than a minute in duration, um, where we're going to work at probably 85% of max effort. Okay. Um, and then we're going to have a rest period that elicits us to be able to recover before we go do that next working cycle. Okay. And then we want to try to achieve the same output we had, which is going to help your body burn fat. And it really works your you know, uh, anaerobic energy system. Okay, that makes sense. So other gyms would just have you try to keep that max that max effort the whole time when we actually promote rest to keep it sustainable, correct? Yeah, a lot of other gyms uh, want you to just burn as many calories as you can because mm-hmm. it's a shareable piece, like social media. I burned 500 or 600 or 1,000 calories in that workout. I guarantee you, you can't do that consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, or you're gonna get burnt out, you're gonna get hurt. Like, it, it's just a recipe for disaster in the long run. So uh, do what is sustainable for the long run and you're gonna get a lot better result. Okay, cool. Do you wanna give us a quick little recap about what we talked about today? Just a little, some little highlights of what we covered and everything? Absolutely, so today we got to talk about what we believe about fitness here at Solid Rock. Uh, what is mind-muscle connection and why it is so important to take your results to the next level. And we talked about the importance of slowing things down so you're actually able to achieve uh, mind-muscle connection. And part of slowing things down is making sure you take rest between sets because that's gonna allow you to have really good form and to do the movements properly so you can get the most bang for your buck. And then we talked about our endurance work we do here at Solid Rock, about keeping things sustainable so we can have long lasting results, so we can stay healthy well into our 80s and do something that's actually gonna increase our longevity. Thank you guys for listening. It would mean the world to us if you were to like, review, and share this podcast on whatever platform you consume it on so that we can help get the word out to inspire more people to look good, move well, and feel great. 